Today, I'm going to be talking about how to light a scene with absolutely no money. So last week I did a recreation of a scene in Prisoners, which you can see here. While I was doing pre-production for this recreation, I was thinking of how I was going to light it. So to kind of help me uh, with the thought process, I actually looked at some B-roll of the actual film. And what I noticed was that Roger Deakins, this master cinematographer, was mostly just using natural light and maybe some diffusion or some flags. And that's it. So, so what I challenged myself to do was to light this entire film and make it look good by only using natural lighting and practical lights like lamps and stuff. I, and I think the end product actually turned out pretty well considering the, um, the, the, the restraint of not being able to use any, any uh, professional lights. So how, do, so how did I do this without using any sort of um, external light source like that, any, any power really? First, you need to think about um, how traditional lighting works. Um, you know, with lights, you know, on stands, you think about where you're going to put the light. But with natural lighting, there's only one light you can use. What is it called? It's that massive fiery ball in the sky. Oh right, the sun. And you can't move the sun. You can only wait for the sun to go down or wait for the sun to come up. So when you're thinking about how to light a scene with the sun, you can't be thinking about how you, you will go about moving um, the light. You're gonna have to be thinking about how you're gonna place your subjects so that the sun looks best. In that aspect, it starts to make you think about blocking the position of your characters. It really does start to engage your mind in a way that traditional lighting wouldn't. So say for the first scene, when Loki was talking with Bob, or I made sure that we started filming when the sun would be in a position where it would be backlighting Loki while being the main light or key light to Bob. And another thing to remember when uh, filming with only natural lighting, especially indoors, is um, to film next to windows. You can get an image with a lot of contrast without having to buy any really bright lights like that. So for example, Christopher Nolan's first feature film, The Following, was filmed mostly next to windows, and we all know where he ended up. And if you pay special attention, um, to all the scenes in, in last week's recreation, you can see that almost every shot has a window in it. And that's due to the fact that windows are a great light source and that they're really the only light source um, when, when you want to film with only natural lighting. Of course, other than practical lights, but I'll get to that later. And if you want to control natural light, if you want a little more control over, the, over your lighting, you can bounce it with anything white, you can diffuse it with anything translucent, and you can block it with anything black. So, it really is that simple. Okay, so quick side note. If you like the show, or if you know someone that could like the show, subscribe, tell them about it, share, like, please get the word out about this show. It's new, it's blooming, I want to get it out there. So please do whatever you can to share it if you like this show. If you don't, I don't know, you can just leave it alone, I guess. But if I reach 100 subscribers by Christmas, I'll release something, something special, some, something a little special for you. So next I'm going to be talking about practical lights. For one scene in particular, once he breaks open the door into the room with all the industrial crates, um, I wanted to have practical lights in that scene, which are basically any light that isn't natural light or any light like a studio light. So lamps, fire, candles, whatever. And, and my, my reasoning behind this was that there's something very natural and almost soothing about natural light. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to set up a contrast between kind of the natural light throughout um, the house and then once he reaches this, this room it becomes a lot darker, a lot um, less natural, a lot more disturbing. And um, one way I thought I'd do this is by using these kind of very tungsten 
um, warm um, practical lights. Um, and practical lights are great, I think. So I mostly just use lamps for that scene. One thing to remember about practical lights is they're a great way to establish um, motivation of your lighting in a certain scene. Motivation behind light is essentially a reasoning behind why a light is in a certain place. A, a lot of the times, it's good to have motivation behind your lights to make them realistic. If you have like uh, some something that looks cool but isn't motivated, it won't look natural and it'll take your audience out of the scene. If you have a bright green light like glaring at your face and like a bright pink light um, coming from behind you and it's supposed to be like a business meeting, it isn't going to make a lot of sense. Of course, you can do these things for stylistic reasons. All I'm saying is that motivation helps if you're aiming for realism. So say, say right now I have this kind of warm orange um, edge light right now and um, you know I, I, I just thought I, I think it looks cool for just for the video it adds some visual interest but say if I was creating a short film if I just added a practical lamp back there it would give motivation to the light motivation behind why the light was there for example so now as you can see that light is motivated now it's much more realistic if you don't believe me, look at any scene in a movie. Look at the lights on the actor's face and then look behind them and see if there's any motivation, any practical lights. This will also help teach you um, how you motivate your light and kind of techniques that the pros use that you could adopt as well. But again, never use anything I say as a rule book. Just use them as guidelines. But again, these rules are meant to be broken. Don't be afraid to get stylistic and creative. I mean, look at Blade Runner. They shot these massive lights into these large pools of water to get these amazing dreamlike reflections um, in their film that I haven't really seen anywhere and haven't really seen since. There wasn't much motivation behind that, but it still worked because it was creative in it and it fit thematically and tonally. So if you want to experiment, do it. Just remember to try to stay realistic and true to your tone and theme. Try new things. So if you're on a budget, if you have no idea what you're doing, if you're just starting out, don't be discouraged. Don't buy a $300 like it and expect great results. Go find a window, go find a camera, and start experimenting. See what works. In fact, if you're really motivated, stop this video right now and try it out for yourself. But subscribe first! And like and comment first. Anyways, I am a local boy who makes movies. This has been Marathon Episode 4. I'll see you guys next week. Hell yeah.